Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tom. I'm an Open University student. Uh, and today's video, we're going to be, well, I'm going to be talking you through the environment that they use for tutorials on Open University. They use a free software called Adobe Connect, made by Adobe. Uh, I can't go through the website itself right now because I'm in between modules. Um, and when I'm in between modules, obviously I can't look at tutorials or access the tutorial room. But uh, I've got a photo from Adobe, which I will bring you over to in a second. Talk through with that and I'll explain what each bit is for. Adobe Connect is completely free software. It is available on the computer through your web browser, I believe, and also on a app through, you know, iOS or Android app. Uh, I didn't use the app, so I can't really answer any questions or talk through the app process. Uh, as far as I know, because there's a lot of other people that used it, um, it works perfectly fine. There used to be an issue right at the beginning of last year with some connection issue. I think that was more Adobe, it's the Adobe Connect itself rather than just the app. So if you want to use the app, feel free. Anyway, I will bring you over to the photo. Like I say, this is from Adobe's website itself. If I go to Adobe Connect, it just tells me to enter the URL of the meeting as such. It is a business oriented software, so they make a lot of references to meetings. But it works perfectly fine for tutorials. Now, on this is the general layout. It might look slightly different, but from the tutorials I looked at, this is what they generally use, this sort of layout. So I will start on the right hand side, ignore these little circles and stuff, this is from the photo that I found on Adobe's blog. But I'll start on the right hand side because that's the easiest stuff to go through, and then I'll talk through some of the other sections. So in the top right is the webcam. Uh, this is where the tutor might open the webcam. From the several tutors I've had, there's only been one tutor that used the webcam. So I don't really think it takes anything away from the tutorial. I suppose it's nice to put a face to a voice, but honestly from the other, the vast majority of other tutor tutors that don't use the webcam, I don't think it really affects them. It doesn't really affect the tutorial that much at all. So down here, um, in the, with the host section, um, again, I ignore that name, that's just from this photo, but that would be where your tutor's name would be, or tutors. Some, tut some tutorials do have more than one, um, usually like the sort of introduction to module tutorials would have more than one, but if there's more than one, it'll be there. Um, then you've got p participants, this is where you'll be. This will be a list of every student that is attending the tutorial. Um, the most I've ever had in one tutorial was the beginning, was the first ever introductory, introductory tutorial for the maths unit I did, MST124. Uh, because that is a module that is taught across several different courses, you know, not just my computer and IT courses, maths is obviously used all over the place. Uh, I think I had like 70, 80, maybe over 100, I can't really quite remember to be honest, um, which is a lot of people. But um, typically, especially later on in the year, you might get less than 10. I attended a math tutorial at one point, um, and there were literally three of us in it. So, which, to be honest, having only three of us is kind of a plus anyway, because it's very more, it's much more personal, and you can chat with the tutor. And if you've got any questions, you know, 99% of the chance they're going to see your question. They're going to, you know, help you through it, whatever. So that'll be the list of your name and everyone else that's intending the tutorial. Chat box, again, very straightforward. That's where you type and chat. Um, that's where most of the most of the participants will enter any questions or interact with the tutorial itself. It would be through the chat box. You can use your microphone. You might see up here there's a microphone and the webcam um, for yourselves. Although you can the they will ask you to set up your microphone every time you enter tutorial. Most tutors don't really, or most participants, students don't use the microphone because because there's so many people sometimes that if you're all just talking, it's very noisy. And also, a lot of people have um, background noise from like TV and stuff. So chances are you'll set it up, and then the tutor will ask you you all to mute your microphone, which you do by just. Clicking on there, obviously I can't do it, it's a photo, but 
you would click on there and you would mute it. So like I say, most people use the chat box. Um, you can make your chat a different color if you want to stand out a bit. Um, but yeah, pretty straightforward. You can also drag these about. Like I said, this is, this is all changeable, but this is what most tutors, tutorials are set out like. So you can make that a bit bigger if you want. Yeah, anyway. Uh, below, it's not on this screenshot, but there might be like a little pop-up bit for downloads. Sometimes the tutors might upload like a PDF or the PowerPoint that they use, something like that, and then you can download it. Not very common, but it can, if it pops up, it pops up, it's there for you to download, it's literally just like and downloads on your computer. Uh, again, I didn't use the app, so I don't know what downloading is like through the app. I presume it works very, very well, or, you know, just as, just as good, I, I presume, because why wouldn't it be? You know, all mobile phones and iPads and whatever can download stuff, so that would that would be a pop-up bit. On this main screen here, um, this is what the tutorial will be about. The tutor can share their screen, or they can just click through like some sort of PowerPoint. That's what the vast majority of them pretty much are as a PowerPoint presentation. Um, but they can, if they need to show you something else, they can bring it up because they can just share the computer screen, which is obviously quite helpful at times. Uh, on the right hand side, again, it's not on here. There would be a little pop-up bit here. Um, there's like drawing tools. The label drawing tools, but it's just a way for you to interact. Um, it'll be like, it's like paint almost. You click on it, you get a pen, and then you can write on this main screen here. And not only will you two be able to see it, but everyone else will be able to see it. Um, and you can see everyone else's, obviously. So sometimes the tutor might ask you all to write stuff down or maybe even talk through your, <laughs> your working out. I don't, I don't know, you know, um, might do that. Or the tutor might use it themselves if they want to pay more attention. Like they might say, say this full screen is in bold. They might themselves just go through and underline it and then put an arrow to something else. And, you know, I was explaining to it. So they would be using that. Most tutors use OK headphone, uh, OK microphones. Uh, they rec OU recommends yourself to get a headset with a microphone because obviously then it's not like an all in one. There's nothing stopping you using like your own headphones and another dedicated microphone if you've got one, or maybe even Webcam's microphone. There's no, there's no reason you can't do that. You go through the setup process of going on the audio there, and you just literally like just pick. Pick which microphone you want to use, pick which webcam you want to use or whatever, or what head what headset you want to use. It's it's pretty straightforward. They'll ask you to set it up every time. I think that's because sometimes for some people it clears when they close down. Um I don't know if that is just if you go through the browser it clears every time, but for me I downloaded the software because it was pretty light software. Um and it saves my settings every time, so I'm not having to set it up every single time I want to do it. Book a new tutorial. Again, I can't go through it because, you know, I'm in between modules. So, but going online, you would go to your student homepage. You would look at the module, the tutorial dates, and then you can literally see all the tutorials and you can book whichever one you want. Um, most online tutorials are in the evening time, midweek. Occasionally, there will be like a Saturday morning one. If you prefer in-person tutorials, they do offer them as well. They're not nearly as often because obviously the tutors are busy. They, most tutors, I think, are part time, so obviously they're, they're doing something else. <laughs> Usually, the university they lecture themselves, but um, yeah, so you can do online. Usually, quite local. Uh, one that pops into my mind was a maths one. Um, for me, it was in Leeds, which is a short train ride away or a short car journey away. So it's not too bad. Um, you can go see them. Like I say, it's not nearly as often, maybe one, one a month, if that. But if you, you know, if you put it in person, you can go through and maybe you can explain yourself a bit better, etc. The microphones do come in handy. Um, some people much prefer using the microphones, especially, like I say, if there's only like a couple of people in it. There's no reason why you can't use microphones. Um, I found chatting easier just because I can just type and whatever it was pretty straightforward up here actually the top right you see a little hand up thing that hand up is 
basically some sort of icons that you can put next to your name so it'll be here in the participants next to your name there'll be like a little icon um the tutors use that to confirm that you understand everything they might say just put a tick if you confirm it and you'd click down there you'd be a drop down there's like several different ones one would be a green tick and um, there's also a hands up one which i believe if you tick that it'll push you to the top of the participants list i think to try and get you noticed in case you've got a question or whatever um most of the time you don't have to use that you can just type the question in the chat box and the tutor will read it but sometimes obviously if they're deep in the tutorial concentrating on what they're actually saying and what they're showing on the screen sometimes they might miss the chat box um but if you need to get the tutor's attention that's probably the, the quickest way is doing the hands up button and then putting the question in the chat and usually usually they get it sorted for you yeah I think that's pretty much it for the tutorials honestly it's, it's very straightforward very easy um obviously it's online um if you're in a poor internet connected area maybe try and get other people to not use the internet as much when you're on um i think this from what i remember this little green bar up there just below the cross I think that's some sort of I think that's like a connection icon to show you what your connection is like. Um sometimes for me it'll go down to like amber because I only I only have like five down one up <laughs> in my area, so it's not the, the greatest, so sometimes I might struggle with connection. Um but obviously your internet um <laughs> prefer you know, put us preference on audio and voice. So if you're if you end up do speaking, chances are they will be able to hear you because you your internet connection will prioritize your voice communications but yeah anyway less about that <laughs> um yeah i think that's everything honestly it's super straightforward uh, most tut most tutorials are like an hour and a half long some are a lot shorter especially like if there's not many people sometimes the tutor will get through it pretty quick and then they'll ask if there's any more questions if there isn't whatever i've had them done in an hour if you've got any group work um one of my modules had a group work aesthetic to it um you would log on your own you can there's like a little joining page and you can just make your own and as long as the other group members know to join at that time you can just join and have your own like meeting as, as such and use all the facilities that yourself you can use a webcam you can still use a microphone and stuff completely down to you guys so if there's any um group work that's a lot easier than trying to meet up because although usually are in the same sort of area um like i had a group work and i think there was like there was me and then there was some people that lived in huddersfield and some people that lived in leeds um so it would have been a bit of a pain to meet up in person so this is obviously a lot easier and obviously works around other people's work schedules so yeah i think that's everything if you've got any more questions about the tutorials processes um then yeah let me know one thing when you do book tutorials um it allows you to add it to your electronic calendar of choice like google calendars so i usually attach it to that and then it would automatically be on my phone calendar um with a little reminder when it's coming to time so maybe that might be useful for some people if you have really busy home lives but yeah i think that's everything i think so yeah if you had any questions let me know in the comment section um all social media links in the description if you want to ask a question through that um if not i will see you guys in the next one in a bit <laughs>